please find your feet, your seats. We will be starting in two minutes. Again, we will be starting in two minutes.
Please have a seat. The lights are going off. Please find a seat. Thank you. Thank you. When I came to this program, uh, a gentleman by the name of Coach Matusik back in 88 uh, changed this team from being a gymnastics team to an outreach witnessing team doing week of prayers during service projects for taking over Sabbath schools and, and church programs or doing the play on a Friday night. And for 20 years, I've had the, uh, the privilege of, of following and, and tweaking that model a little bit. I have been honored to have been here at the best school I know of in the North American division as far as pushing kids spiritually beyond their comfort zone. For, for, if, if, if it's our, uh, our music program, to Arrows, to our outreach mis uh, missions, I came here because when I was called 20 years ago, as I looked at the school over the weekend, I said, I'm going there, I feel called, but this is where I want my own kids to graduate. My daughter graduated in 09, my son graduated in 2011. You, we in the, in the Michigan Conference have a jewel in this school. Some do. I want to say one other thing. In 20 years before uh, I came here, my first 20 years, I had gone through uh, 11 prince, uh, 10 principles, including myself. Uh, I don't need a real job. In the last 20 years, I've gone through two. I've gone through this. Of course, Mr. Garcia is still here. I know from experience and doing this a long time. If your principal is not the spiritual leader of your school, the staff, including the chaplain, will be lost. And I'm proud to say that even though he's a young gun, that Delwyn Garcia is being used here at Great Lakes. I so appreciate also uh, Jeremy Hall, our educational superintendent, that I had the opportunity to work with here for, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years. These men are letting God use them. I'm so grateful to the Michigan Conference because the number one evangelism tool, the most money that goes into evangelism, goes into our young people here. And there's not, I, I don't know of another conference where that's the number one evangelism between Campus Sable and Pathfinders and Adventures. And Jeremy, how many elementary schools in Michigan? 32, four academies, Andrews University. We are blessed to be here. I am honored to have worked with an incredible staff for the last 20 years. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this, the young people that you have blessed me over the last 20 years with and beyond before that. The relationships and friendships that I still have today. As I got paid to do what I enjoyed to do, what you have called me to do, I am a rich man. And tonight, Lord, as we do gymnastics on these mats, to the 
the play that has been written and interwoven with physical activities. We need you because our goal is to reflect who you are, not draw attention to who we are. So do that, please, and thank you. And as we go through this program, help us to be aware of your Holy Spirit. Let that filter show Jesus Christ in every way. Thank you, Lord, for this honor. In Jesus' name, amen. My mind is a, a little cluttered. Um, as some of you know, uh, I had ADD, and then I had the privilege of knowing that I get an extra letter in that now, just two weeks ago. This young lady back here, you were born while I was teaching here, right? And she lived in the guy's dorm for several years, then Mr. Hall became um, chaplain, and then he moved on, and the Michigan Conference gratefully brought the family back home. And God has led us to uh, choose Sophia Hall to sing our national anthem. If you could please stand. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and Good evening, everyone. I have the, wow, that is blinding. <laughs> I have the privilege tonight of sharing an award, and I've asked Coach to stay up here with me because we get to honor you with this award. Those of you who know Ted Webster know a few things about him. He loves his family, amen? He talks about his lady friend, Terry. 
how hot she is, all that. We get to hear it all. <laughs> he talks about Jordy and Rachel and Jesse and Danny and, of course, Bodie and Lucy. <laughs> yeah, this man loves his family, and he loves his student family. Many students out there know that, right? But those who know Coach Webster also know that he has a best friend, Jesus Christ. He loves Jesus and has a genuine relationship with him. And Coach, we know, because we know you, that you live out your faith. You are a sermon in shoes. You share the love of Jesus with others just by being you. And that's why so many people have come out tonight to appreciate what God has done through you. And I know that Coach gives God all the glory. And like his friend Jesus, Coach loves to serve other people. He finds great joy in service. He exemplifies this clearly in his daily walk, in his classes, men's Bible study group that he leads every week, the weeks of prayer at sister academies, the Listen America tour every year, the mission trips you take every other year. You have faithfully served the Lord in Seventh-day Adventist education for four decades, my friend, <laughs> and you have served him well. Amen? Amen? Because of your joy of service, I have the privilege of presenting Ted Webster with a nationally recognized award. The Seventh-day Adventist Health, Physical Education, and Recreation Association recognizes the longtime contributions you have made during your long career to the profession, your colleagues, your students, and your community by bestowing the Service Award to Ted Webster. I tell my kids I'm only a cracked vessel. And if God can use me and the talents that my kids have and, and, and parents who have supported me over the years, God can use anyone. And I want to make sure that tonight is, is not just about this short little bald man, but it's about God who has used me in spite of my, uh, my cracks. It's been an honor to serve. And whenever you choose to serve, wherever you are, in your church, in your school, in your community, you're the one that gets the blessing. When you choose to serve, you feel like you're the one that's blessed, whether it be a mission trip or a week of prayer or, or maybe sharing God in, 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 in your office or in your work, students in the dorms. When you set out to serve, isn't it amazing how God then makes you more blessed than what you set out to do? Thank you very much. I'm going to call.
year, I don't know when it was, and some of you might know, the time doesn't matter, but two uh, Alair Arrows um, alumni coming back, I believe it was from Andrews University to their home in the Upper Peninsula, the Wilson area, were, uh, long before I got here, killed in a tragic car accident. His last name was Berger, her last name was Dovich. The family, in memory of their kids, set up an investment that is known as the Berger Dovich Award. It's a scholarship. And every year we uh, award the interest off of that to a student who's gone up and beyond the call of duty. And that scholarship will go against that student's bill. And this year, Berger Dovich Award winner is my girl's captain, Morgan Stahl. I can't remember what's next. <laughs> oh, we're going to do something here called uh, passing the torch. Um, I've known Matt Price for uh, oh boy, since like in seventh grade or so when his older brother Andrew was on Arrows. His wife was also on Arrows, and after about 16 years, finally, Matt Price gets to be on Arrows. So Matt and Krista, if you would come out here, please. Oh, yeah, bring Jonathan. And uh, Jeremy Hall, if you could come down here. So just a little, a lot of you know Matt Price and Krista Price and little Jonathan, who's a little confused about what's happening right now. But what many of you don't know is that this man's success is owed to me because I was his eighth grade teacher way back in the day. So you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> Where did Ted go? He's coming, all right. We've, we've invited uh, Jeremy Hall up here and we're gonna have a word of prayer for you in just a moment, but I think uh, Ted wants to share something with you. All right, we just wanna surround you in prayer. There is no doubt in my mind, in our minds, that God was in this. God has called this family to serve at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. The door was flung wide open. It was made abundantly clear. And we are so thrilled that he and she and little man have answered the call to come and serve here at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. Oh, this is awesome. Amen. Come on in, guys. Come on in. I'm going to offer up a word of prayer, and then I'm going to pass the mic to our superintendent, Jeremy Hall. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful tonight for the service of Theodore Webster. And we are also grateful, Lord, that you have not left us with just a wide open vacancy, but you have called Matt and Krista and Jonathan to come and serve here at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. Amen. You have been preparing their family as they have been deaning and teaching and serving young people at a sister academy. And now is the time that you have called him to come here and to serve the students and the staff and the parents and the community of Great Lakes Adventist Academy. We're grateful tonight, Lord, because you have called this family, and because you have called them, you are going to equip them. And Father, I pray a special blessing over them as they transition, as they say goodbyes, as they go through the moving process, as they settle in, as they start to establish themselves here in this community, Lord, I pray that you would surround them with your angels, 
with peace, with protection, and with the love of this community so that they know and they will never forget that you have called them to serve here. We thank you that you're an awesome God, and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father in heaven, I would join the prayer of my brother. Lord, I can't think of a more important time for Avenus education to exist than right now at this time in Earth's history. Lord, as we look at the gymnastics program, we look at Ericana's, truly it has been a witnessing program that has shared your love with thousands of people. And we've been privileged to be workers in your vineyard. And Lord, we just thank you for the ministry of Ted and for the willing vessel he has been for so many years showing your love to students and families. And Lord, we just ask now a special blessing to rest upon the Price family, Matt and Krista. Lord, we just ask that you would guide them, that you would direct their steps, and that you would continue to use them as you have in the past, here, now, in the present, and in the future at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory and honor because it is truly yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Um, I had some grandiose ideas that didn't come through, but I do have three things that have uh, been given to me uh, early in my career here at Great Lakes that I would like to uh, pass on to my friends and former arrow here, Krista. Yeah, you've probably seen these hanging in my office, but it's very, very important. Never, but never, question the coach's judgment. <laughs> and then on a spiritual note, back on, I think it was 04, a parent gave this to me as coach. I want to pass this on. And uh, Joshua 14, no, Joshua 24, 15. Uh, this is a mahogany, a really nice mahogany pen and case. On the outside, as it says, that's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. And I'd like to pass this on. It also has the text on the inside. And on the, the same passage, um, boy, this is hard. But I know arrows is in good hands. And I've known you guys for a long time. And again, Joshua twenty four fifteen. And when we choose to serve. There can be no other higher calling that God calls to us other than to have a relationship with him. And I'm really proud that these two friends of mine, these youngins, Eros is in good hands. I didn't want to pass up an opportunity to make you emotional one more time. Um, in 2010, I had the opportunity to help Jordy and coach uh, teach gymnastics at summer camp. I wasn't, a, I wasn't an arrow, but I got wrangled in somehow, and I had the blessing to, to be a part of that. At the end of the summer, uh, Coach Webster pulled me aside and says, you're going to Andrews University in the fall? Yeah. You should try out for gymnics. And I had never even thought of that as, an opportunity, as a possibility. But even though you were not my coach on these mats, you gave me the encouragement to, and the confidence to go forward and try something new. And because of that conversation, I'm here tonight. In 2019, we did a week of prayer at Highland View Academy where uh, coach has started his own gymnastics program 
And um, I can remember him pulling me aside and said, when are you going to retire? <laughs> I want your job. And the day has come. I'm guessing that a lot of you know what we're here to announce. So can I please get a drum roll for next year's 23-24 Air Connors Girls Captain? Okay, Anna Drozdov. And a drum roll for the men's captain of the 2023-2024 Air Connor Gymnastics team, Owen Kroll. This play, Gymnastics, is called uh, The Lasting Investment. And uh, I had no part in, in doing anything on this. Mrs. Wallace led a, uh, a home show play committee. Uh, Dean Warren and Jacob Pierce and the captains uh, were all a part of that. And I, as I, I've gone through the script, I am just amazed at how God has led them to do this. Lasting investment. June 25, 1924. What's going on in New York City here? The Barclay family just opened their third store. They're selling radios, refrigerators, and all the goods. The stock market is still booming. I like to see that. Something else that might spark your interest is that the New York Giants first baseman George Kelly went solo on June 14 after hitting three homers to drive in all of New York's runs during an 8-6 to six victory over the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. Huh. Seems like things are going pretty well here in New York. What could go wrong on a day like today? What could go wrong? Oh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, excuse me, sir.
And that is why we leave early to get to the store at 8 a.m. Martha, you should have gotten the kids ready sooner. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Hey, Martha, how's it going? Is Coach in, um, is John in there? I was curious if my package came in yet. Oh, of course he's in there, but I'll go check on that package. Hey, John, how's it going? I was curious to see if my order came in yet. I'm really swamped today, man, and we got into the store a little bit late because of traffic. Um, I can help with your kids today if you want, if you're so busy. I can get them out of your hair for a few hours. You come in here every time asking to take my kids. And I give you the same answer every time. And, oh, no. Well, let me know if you ever change my mind. You can put the order on my tab. See you later, John. Thanks again. Why is he always spending so much time over at the church? John, don't you remember? His dad was an elder at that church. Now he's an elder at that church. I'm pretty sure all of the men have, have been involved in that church. And don't you remember him inviting us to church when we were kids? And also to that youth program that we used to attend to? Yeah, I remember. But I don't want to be a part of any of that Christianity stuff. And I don't want my wife or my kids to be a part of it either. This is what's going on over there. Dad? 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 Can you please go and join those people over there? Not today, son. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ross. <laughs> Dad. Where did you learn how to do that, Uncle Ross? There's a lot about your Uncle Ross that you don't know. Come on, kids. Let me show you a few things I used to do back in my day.
head home and enjoy the rest of our evening. Okay, um, I'm gonna stay behind for a couple more minutes. I need to grab a few things. I'll meet you guys outside. Okay, come on guys, let's go. Have you seen my purse? so fun. Can we please, 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 can we try? I don't know. I don't know how your father would feel about that. Come on, Mama, please. Can we try, please? Hey, what are you kids pestering your mother about? Dad, we want to try some of that trick that Uncle Ross was doing in the other. He said he can do some cool stuff, too. It's been a long day, and I really don't want to do anything besides go home. Come on, Uncle John. Can you do it for us, please? Yeah, or are you scared? <laughs> Russell, <laughs> stop. He's mad as it is. <laughs> Firstly, I am not scared. Second, I'm not mad. And finally, let me show you guys how it's done.
guys got what you wanted. Are you happy now? Is that a smile I see on your face? That was so amazing. <laughs> All right. You guys got what you wanted, so let's go home. Now listen. I have to admit, that was pretty spectacular. But my hair is off to you, trust me. But ladies, let's show them how it's really done. Actually getting late now, so 
Can we please go home? You guys got your little show. Come on. For a brief moment, John once again had a smile on his face, one that people had not seen for a long time. But as quickly as it appeared, it faded away. All good things must come to an end. Why did you talk me into doing all those tricks yesterday? Now my back hurts, and I couldn't get out of bed on time today. Listen, I know that you love getting back out there and reliving the good old days. You don't know what you're talking about. We don't talk about the past, Martha. What, whatever it is, just leave me and my back out of it. Yes!
that cool? I want to show you something else. If I need a very brave volunteer, it needs to be someone super strong and super courageous. <laughs> oh, I see you in the back. Well, remember, that pride goes before a fall, so don't get too full of yourself.
much for believing in me. <laughs> Matthew, go back to the store now. I need to talk to Coach. John, I can explain. What part of N-O did you not understand? I've never given you permission to hang out with my kids and train them in this gymnastic stuff. What are you trying to do now? Take my kids from me? Are you trying to sell them on this Christianity stuff? I'm sorry, John. I wasn't trying to do anything you didn't approve of or overstep. Oh. Of course. Of course, of course, of course. <coughs> A goody two-shoes like you wouldn't ever try to do anything wrong. You never have, and you never will. When John was a child, his father left, and his mother was forced to become the sole breadwinner for the family. She worked night and day to get by and provide for the two brothers. John was the man of the house. Many days after school, they would return to an empty home, and they would have to fend for themselves for food and the cleaning of the house. The neighbors took pity on the two young boys and would regularly invite them over at first just for dinner. But dinner would eventually turn into much more. Dinner would be followed by family worship where they would read the Bible. Eventually, the boys would accompany them to church. The youth group had gymnastics programs that met on Sunday mornings. The boys and the family became inseparable. That was until the untimely diagnosis of their mother's illness. The church came and prayed for their mother, but the illness continued its slow progression until it eventually took her life their very first year in high school. John wondered how this God he was told all these wonderful things about could cause so much sadness in his life. It was at that crossroad that John and Russ went two different ways. Russ would choose to continue to go to church and hang out with the family, but John would do his own thing. At first, John would still occasionally show up at church or at gymnastics, but soon he was not seen at all. He found an apprenticeship and began to throw everything he could into his work, and as you can tell, he hasn't ever looked back. The years of watching his mother toil away for endless hours lit a fire inside of him. His family never had to struggle like they did when he was growing up. He would make sure of that to his last breath. He worked until he was able to start his own store and then another. He had more money than he knew what to do with. Everything was going just as he planned until that fateful day.
Now, don't force me to sing. Oh, you call me Ron? you and coach arguing and then you were gone yeah I just needed to clear my head I can't believe the audacity of that man on top of disrespecting me and my family you know what else he did uh, I mean I overheard him mention God yeah exactly that ship sailed a long long time ago and he has no business trying to get me or my family to go back. Listen, I'm sorry, dear, but it's getting late and the children are at home, so we should probably go back. Yeah, let's just stop by the store first. I need to grab a few things to work on tonight. Martha, did you forget to lock the door before you left this evening? I wasn't the last one to leave. Well, the door is unlocked. Great, another thing I have to deal with today. Something seems off here. Why is there a barrel in the middle of the floor? Hold on, I'm almost to the light switch. We've been robbed! Oh no. No, no, no. This can't be happening. Martha. Check the register. I'm going to check the safe in the back. The entire register is completely empty. And so is the safe. Oh, my word. Why is this happening to me? If you can't tell, I love my job. And, uh, yeah. 
If we could have the house lights on, please. Um, this year we went to uh, Puerto Rico and each uh, team member had to raise approximately $1,800. Uh, the first year I came here, um, the 03 04 school year, Arrows was uh, over $1,000 in the red. And uh, Mr. Levitt and uh, the school, they wrote it off. And ever since then, we've been able to stay in the black every year and actually have a cushion for the next year. So at this time, we're going to take up an offering. And uh, we're really close right now. I think we're going to be okay after home show. But this offering is really for Coach Price and next year's uh, arrows. So they have a cushion to start on. And um, we'll have people taking up uh, the offering. And for those of you who have cash app, apps, whatever they're called, um, we will have some QR codes uh, floating through as well. But let's pray first before we do this. Father God, you have blessed each of us more than we deserve. And right now, Lord, bless this offering so that it can be used for your honor and glory next year. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of Act One. If you would like at this time to use the restroom or get a drink of water, please do so. Please avoid stepping on the mats or going near the stage. Once again, intermission, it will be for 10 minutes. Coming back at 11.11.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is your two-minute warning. Two minutes until the show starts at approximately 11.11. The lights will be going off in 30 seconds. The lights will be going off in 30 seconds.
March 9, 1933, the Treasury Department declares a depression following the stock market crash of 29. The financial hardship is hitting members of all economic levels. Banks are limiting the amount of money that can be withdrawn. The Barclay family declares bankruptcy and all stores would be closed this week. Red lines are stretching for blocks and there's no relief in sight. The local church opens a food pantry to assist the less fortunate. Wow, this is terrible.
in the beginning. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God in the beginning. All things that were made were made by God. And if we go down to John 1, 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So there's, there's no doubt about who the Word is. Jesus came down here to take care of us. Isn't that good news? How's it going today? John, how's it going today? Oh, uh, you know, pretty horrible as of late. I never thought I'd have to be back here, but yeah. So, how does this whole food pantry thing work? Well, it's uh, pretty simple. We're open four days a week from five to seven. Sometimes the, the line can get rather long, but it uh, is first come, first serve, and um, it doesn't cost anything but your time. Free food with no strings attached. That sounds a little too good to be true, but desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. It does seem kind of crazy, doesn't it? But God has provided the food so that we can share with the community. And so here we are. Oh, by the way, you're the next family in line. Dad, I'm so hungry. I can't stand it any longer. There's no way I'm going to be able to walk home in this much hunger. Quiet hey. down. We'll be able to eat soon. Claire, I know we haven't had apples in a long time, but... Would you take it and share it with your brother? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hopeless. Hopeless? It's never hopeless. Yes, these are hard times, but ever since sin entered our world, it's, it's not hopeless. God tells us in, in the Bible that he will always come through. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, not plans for disaster, not plans for bad times, but to give you a future and a hope. And uh, Hebrews eleven twelve it says, faith is the confidence of what we hope for. Faith is the confidence of what we hope for. The assurance of things we can't see. So hopeless? No, not if we hold fast to Jesus. Philippians 1, 6 says, be confident of this. Confident. Comfort. That's not hopeless, that's hopeful. That he who began a good work in you will complete it. Does anybody know what uh, John 3.16 says? You do? For God what? So loved. So loved. How big is so love? Huge. So loved who? The world. That he has sent his, his precious son, the creator of the universe, down here to die for us.
Jesus Christ is coming back soon. So hope. Because he's not done with your story yet. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty darkness was over the surface of the deep. But the spirit of God was hovering across the waters. Moses, he stretched out his hand over the sea and caused, and God caused an east wind to come out of the sea and it blew across the waters and all night long it turned that seabed into dry land and the waters, the waters were divided. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, the men gave a loud shout, and, and the wall collapsed. And everybody just charged right into the city. said to the servant who held his hand, put me, put me where I can fill the pillars that support this pagan temple that I, that I may lean against them.
David said to the Philistine, little David, you come against me with the sword and the javelin, but I, I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty and the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the zither, the, the lyre, the harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must bow down. The church tried hard to meet the needs of the people of the city, but despite their best efforts, the need quickly outgrew what the church could do, and people everywhere continued to struggle. It was difficult to find work, and many were in the streets begging for jobs. Every member of the family began to look for work. Children would beg and plead for any and every job that was available to them. Even women who were normally homemakers joined the workforce. And even with every member of the family working, the needs of the family still could not be met.
I just can't take it anymore, Martha. I worked so hard for all of this. I never wanted you or the kids to have to go through what I went through in my childhood. I never wanted you to have to take handouts or not be able to meet my family's needs. And all that I have to show Everything that I've done is this crummy little box. Oh, John, how do we ever get into this situation? Remember? Remember how God was faithful in the stories the pastor told us about? Faithful? Since when has God been faithful? When he allowed my mother to suffer and die. When he took everything that I created away from me. How is he faithful? Because I don't see it or believe it.
John, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Pretty crummy, but that's just the usual, I guess, now. I'm just stopping by to get some food for the family on my way home. Oh, yes, of course. Well, John, you, you really seem down today. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just here for the food. That's all. John, as a friend, be straight with me. What's going on? I don't know. Ever since this whole stock market crash and my store closing, I just don't know what to do anymore. I, I've tried everything, but I just don't know what to do. I'm sorry, John. I really am. And it's, it's been hard on, on a lot of us, and I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine what you've gone through. I am so sorry. But I know of somebody who does know and who can help you.
As the stories of the Bible pass through John's mind, he can't help but reflect on the moments from the past with the pastor before he had made the decision to leave the church. The pastor was always so welcoming, understanding, and provided support through the long nights while John's mother was working, then later when she became sick. It was hard for the pastor to see John walk away from the church, but he had been praying all these years for John's return, hoping that the trials of his past wouldn't keep him away forever. John, I have been praying for this day. You don't know. For many years, I have been praying for this day, and yet you just accepted. You accepted him into your heart. You're a new creature in Christ. Thank you for everything you've done, Pastor Mark. I don't know how I'll ever be able to repay you, but it's God. I really want to talk more about this, but... There's someone else that I really need to talk to first. Okay. Coach, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. I was over at the church talking to Pastor Mark and... You're what? I was over at the church talking to Pastor Mark. Yeah, I heard you the first time. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. Okay. Anyways, I was talking to Pastor Mark and... I've really messed up. I had my priorities in the wrong place. And I've made so many mistakes. But this whole God thing, and I, I still have so many questions, but I'm just wondering if there's any way you can forgive me. Oh, of course, John. And I'm sorry, too. You know, I've been a bit stubborn at times. You know, I've been hard-headed for a while. I prayed for many years and many days that we'd be having this conversation. In fact, that's the reason I was standing outside your store. I was actually trying to figure out what I was going to say to you. And, uh, well, I, th I think that's it. You never were great at remembering stuff, Coach. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry about your store closing down, but I could offer you a possible job opportunity if you're interested. I know it wouldn't pay nowhere near as much as owning a rather successful business, but... Well, I currently have no job offers, and I have been trying everywhere. So, please, tell me more about this job. I received some grant money to officially start a gymnastics program for kids in the inner city. I was wondering if you're interested. I need someone who knows how to have a little fun and knows how to run, run a business. Are you interested? Would I be interested? I mean, I definitely have to freshen up a little bit if you wanted me to help in the gymnastics part. I'm extremely stiff these days, but it sounds like a great opportunity, and the money, it's not important to me anymore. Marthy even has a few job offers coming up this week that really look promising. Money? Not important? God has begun his good work in you, my friend, and I cannot wait to see where he takes you. Let's meet up and talk about this in the morning. All right. I'm going to run home and tell Martha and the kids the good news. Thank you, Coach. See you in the morning.
with the help of John, Coach was able to get four different locations in the city set up for the after-school gymnastics program. John finally had more time to spend with his family, and they grew closer. The Barclay family never did get their stores back up and running, but you couldn't tell. They were all happy, the happiest they'd ever been. Life wasn't always great, but when the trials of life came knocking on their door, they met the trials on their knees. Imagine if Coach had not chosen to invest in John's story every step of the way. Would John's life have been the same? Think of your own life and of those that have chosen to invest in you. How would your story be different without them? Would you be here tonight? How are you willing to invest in others? We have someone here with us tonight that has invested in the future of his students for 40 years. Ted Webster has influenced the lives of not just students, but also many parents and families. From the sandy shores of the Atlantic Ocean at Miami Adventist Academy, to the plains of North Dakota at Dakota Adventist Academy, and then landing here in the Great Lakes state of Michigan, 20 years ago to work at Great Lakes Adventist Academy, he has poured his life into helping his students get to know his personal friend, Jesus Christ. If you are someone that has been impacted by the selfless service of Coach Webster, would you please stand with us now? We love you, Coach. At this time, we would like to invite any former members of the GLAA Air Conus, or if you are a member of the gymnastics team from any of the other Michigan boarding academies, Adelphian Academy, Cedar Lake Academy, Grand Ledge Academy, please join the current team on the mats at this time for our team song.
this theme song goes way past my, my short time here. Would you gather the message of the song? As Joshua is standing in the land of Canaan, the hope of promise, he's already been there 40 years or more. And he challenges. There's, there's already idolatry and things going on in the land. And he goes, choose you today. Arrows, Arrows alumni. No matter where you are right now in your life, choose you today. Who are you going to serve? Let nothing stand in your way. Give the praise that he deserves. And then Joshua finishes up by going, as for me and my house, as for you and your house, choose to serve. Choose to serve. Let's stand for closing prayer. Father God, you are the only giver of every per get good and perfect gift. And, and Lord, tonight, thank you for answering the prayer that, yes, these, these young people have put their hearts out. Their hearts because they love you. But Lord, I ask as we leave this place, that you will be seen in all that was said and done. And as each of us moves on, back to our jobs or back to school, give us that faith strength to be aware of your presence. Give us that faith strength to choose today whom we will serve. I thank you for these kids and their parents and this school administration. Oh, Lord, you have blessed us indeed. In Jesus' name. For those who are on uh, supervision tonight, if we could be out of this, uh, this gym in about 30 minutes at the latest. Thank you.